Hello, thank you so much for coming out. My name is Karen Robe. Uh, my name is Elena. And we are from Fertility Miracles. We are a surrogacy and egg donor agency based in Los Angeles. Um, just a little bit of background information. I was a surgical nurse for an OBGYN and infertility doctor for over 20 years. So I've spent um, my entire professional career around helping people get pregnant and being pregnant. So that's, uh, I think, one of the advantages that we bring as an agency to intended parents who are looking to get an education on the process. I would say uh, for intended parents, one of the most important thing is, is that you have a variety of vendors to choose from, from agencies, from lawyers, to IVF clinics, and the most important thing that you need to do is to educate yourself on the process. Um, ask as many questions as you possibly can. Do all your research, and if something doesn't feel right to you, then it's not the best fit for you, and you need to find another person to fill that spot. Um, I truly believe that the people that you put behind you, the, the doctors, the clinics, the psychologists, the agencies, the surrogates, the donors, all the components that you put together is what's going to make you successful in your embryo transfer and on your journey to becoming pregnant and having a family or expanding your family. Um, um, I say um, one of the questions that we get a lot is what differentiates us from um, other um, agencies in the field. Um, uh, and I would say that um, the biggest um, difference is that uh, with our agency, uh, you can choose an egg donor and a surrogate, and you do not have to pay a retainer fee. Um, so if you do not find that donor or the surrogate that you uh, are looking for, um, then you do not sign uh, or pay an agency fee. Uh, with a lot of agencies, um, you have to uh, go ahead and pay uh, at least half of the agency fee and they will start the, um, the search for um, a surrogate for you. We have um, a uh, database that you can access online with a username and a password um, and you can see that um, uh, without um, any charge uh, and see what uh, profiles are available. Um, and you can make your choice um, after you see what we have to offer. I would say uh, another thing that makes maybe our agency stand out a little bit also is that in selecting a donor or surrogate, that once the donor and surrogate go to your IVF doctor to get medically screened, that in the event that they don't pass their screenings for whatever the reasons are, your fees that you've paid to Fertility Miracles will either be applied towards finding you a new donor or surrogate at no additional charge, or if you decide that you have found a surrogate or donor located at a different agency, then the fees that you paid to us are completely refundable and we will refund those fees to you. Um, so I think that those things that make it a little bit more comfortable for intended parents um, working with us, knowing that that money that they've invested with us, that in the unlikely event that something should happen, that they know that they can have access to their funds and take them and move elsewhere if they needed to. Um, and just to give you an idea, um, we uh, our database has um, about 400 egg donors and um, 100 surrogates to choose from um, at any given time. Um, the, um, the next step to start the process is basically to just contact us. We give you a username and a password, uh, and you can access both uh, the donor and the surrogate uh, database. Um, and then we just start a dialogue and uh, we go from there. So that kind of gives you just a general idea, format of how things work. Typically, um, surrogates, because there's such a high demand for surrogates, um, and we are constantly recruiting on a, a daily basis, um, our surrogates on average spend about two and a half to three weeks on the database before they match with intended parents. So there, there's not a long wait time for intended parents who are looking for a surrogate to find a surrogate mother that will meet the criteria that they're looking for and also that of the surrogate as well. Question. Are most of your surrogates from California? Or are they from all over? The bulk of them are from California because we're located in California and work with many IVF clinics, obviously, in, in California. But we do also recruit surrogates from other surrogate states, but only in states where the laws are crystal clear. Um, we don't like to venture out into the area, to the states where the, the laws are vague and then potentially putting our surrogate and intended parents in any kind of risky legal position. Many of our surrogate mothers also are um, 
not only just repeat surrogate mothers, but are, have been referred to us by other surrogate mothers in the program, which is very nice because then they've seen somebody go through the process. Um, they have kind of like almost like a little built-in support network of somebody that they can go to quickly for a question if they needed to. Um, so that part makes it very nice. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, uh, do you know maybe like I guess the percentage that the likelihood of pregnancy increases from using um, I guess a, a surrogate that a previous surrogate that has all the qualifications versus somebody who just might be a family member. Um, no, because the, your person who's a family member will, uh, at, at a minimum, will have to have met a certain amount of the criteria um, according to the ASM guidelines. Okay. One of those mainly is going to be that she's had a full-term pregnancy and delivery herself. Okay. So, because then at least you know that she can carry a pregnancy and deliver successfully a baby. Right. Um, so that that is at a minimum. But she would still be required to undergo all the testing um, and uh, all the guidelines that uh, the ASRM uh, requires. So. Does it make it any uh, any more successful? No. Your success is really going to be based on the quality of your embryos and the IVF uh, laboratory that you're using. Okay. <laughs> Do you have, want to add anything? No? I have one more question. Okay. So you said the surrogates stay on the database for a few weeks. Does that mean if an intended parent signs on with you, they typically have a match within a few weeks? Yes, mm -hmm. okay. yes. So um, for parents who will log on to the database, um, whether it's donor side or the surrogate side, it will show it whether they're available, matched, or in consideration. Um, and so that, that way um, parents can contact us if somebody reads in consideration, how long those parents have to make a decision before they move forward with the surrogate or donor. And a lot of times we keep surrogates up on the database that will read matched and they can be anywhere in the process of just having been matched or in that six month postpartum phase um, where they we already know that they wish to be rematched again and so we'll be changing their profile to being available again. And you as an agency that you recommend like the insurance and health insurance that we would have for the Yes, we work with an insurance broker. Nobody who's on staff of Fertility Miracles does insurance per se, but we work with an independent insurance broker who um, educates us on the process and we will educate you on the process and then we also have you get in contact with them as well so that you can get fully educated on the process and then make your decisions as to which avenue you want to use in terms of surrogacy. We also, um, there are no lawyers on staff at Fertility Miracles, no psychologists on staff. We, um, it is all independent, that we refer to all independent uh, professionals so that there is, there's, there's nobody in-house that, that, that does that. So we refer everybody out. And what is the cost usually range? The cost of the total cost? Yeah. Well, if you require an egg donor and a surrogate, and, and, and then um, I would tell you that depending upon if they're a local um, donor or local surrogate, repeat, um, stay at home mom versus uh, somebody who's uh, working, plus your IVF fees, legal fees, and whatnot, I would tell you that you would be looking at approximately a hundred to $120,000. And that depends also, once again, if they're repeat, if we're talking twins. Single, yeah, single twin twins. Yes. Uh, could be a little less if she already has insurance. Yes. Yeah. Three differs from, from each surrogate. Right. Okay. Is, I mean, is there a reason why somebody would choose somebody from out of state? Um, it depends. Um, or why one would be, <coughs> I guess, better for them than somebody? For else? a same-sex couple, it is really um, better for you to stay within California because the laws are written uh, for the intended parent and um, to stay, I mean, for you as as a couple to have a child in California, the laws are written favorably for the intended parents. Um, they're there to protect you as the intended parents. There is no adoption process for you as an intended parent. Um, so legally, it, it's very advantageous for you to stay within California. And certain laws where there are, the laws of surrogacy are permissible, um, they're very different you know, in each state, gray and there are some gray areas, and in terms of that, you don't want to go to a state where the areas are gray and open yourself up to any kind of legal situation. But if the egg donor, like his sister, has said that she be willing to do the egg uh -huh. donation, um, but she lives in Texas, would those, would the laws 
Egg donation doesn't matter. Doesn't egg, matter. egg donors come from, from all over the U.S. and it doesn't matter where they donate their eggs. Okay. Yeah. Just the surrogacy. Right? It's only where right. the surrogate resides and will give birth. Right. There, there, um, um, Ron and I have had some uh, discussions about uh, surrogacy in like for the state of Texas, which is where your sister resides. And um, uh, he was under the impression that for same-sex couples that it's very easy to do surrogacy in Texas, and that's not the case. And um, I gave him information in regards to that and said, really, please, to pass this on to your intended parents, whether they work with Fertility Miracles or whoever, it's really important for them to know the legal situation in Texas. You must be married heterosexual couple. Um, otherwise, that baby that is born will be given to the surrogate and not to you as the intended parents. So be very careful yeah, about that. that's right. Ask about well, our, <laughs> our intended surrogate was actually um, a oh, friend right. in Colorado, but um, Colorado's a good state. We, um, we actually didn't know about the whole entire uh, the requirements of a surrogate. Sorry. She's had felt uh, she had a couple of pregnancies. Um, so failed, yeah, she so wouldn't be suitable. She wouldn't be suitable. Yeah. yeah. It's why here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yes. So there's a lot of information that goes into recruiting surrogates. So we talked a little bit in the beginning about um, it, it. Take we probably receive on average. What did you say? Maybe a hundred. A hundred. A hundred surrogate applications a month, and we're we lucky. Love it. We would so love it. We love it. Oh, hundred. Uh, yes, but we're lucky if yeah. if maybe three of those make it uh, all the way to the point of the database. Most mm -hmm. most applications are just are are already thrown out on the first round just on the application alone. To piercings, body tattoos, all these kind of things will BMI will throw a candidate out of the ring just on the first application process alone. So yes, so a lot of information, a lot of work goes into recruiting a surrogate.